it. We're bringing Johnny out to do a greeting routine with a new person and that person is right there. He doesn't even know that person is here, but we have practiced a greeting routine out here multiple times with other people. Good. This time I'm giving him treats all the way. You saw how we brought him out of the, the front door through the yard in the other clip. And now every time I stop and have him sit because we're going to be out here with somebody new. Okay, now I'm doing uh, treats because I want him to come out here and be really relaxed. He sees the person standing there. He doesn't even care. Do a little circle here. Have him sit. This is how you do it. You have him sit six or eight feet away. This is probably more like 10 feet. You step away from him. Give the new person, here's a couple of treats there, a treat. He waits, you come back. If he pops up, you're gonna say no and you're just gonna do a little circle and put him back just like you saw me doing in the other clips. My right hand, he's on my left. With my right hand, you're gonna pat his chest and say, go say hi. He's gonna go over there and take the treats. Come, I'm just using this uh, natural balance, good. Uh, dog training treat that we use but if you really want him to love somebody sit from the second he meets him like this you, you should use something of very high value like chicken breast pieces of cheese something that he, he doesn't get all the time and that will make him have a new perception of meeting new people of course you would be doing this in front of your house on the sidewalk and uh, if you practice it uh, like we practice it here, you, you, meet, you always have the dog meet the people at least in front of your house, not inside your house. That would be all the wrong way to do it because he's going to be triggered to be protective and have anxiety if you have new people walking through that front door and he's on the inside of your place. So that's always the worst place to have your dog when he has issues like Johnny uh, meet people. That's the worst place. So uh, you either introduce him out in front like this, go on neutral territory, come. We'll do it one more time, good. Then I'll show you the rest of that. Or you don't do it at all. And so if you're not able to do it with somebody that comes over, sit, or that person doesn't wanna do it with you, or that person doesn't like dogs or whatever, wait till you can do it, but only do it like this every time so that over time you won't have to do this anymore because he'll have a different perception of what it means to have somebody come to visit you. But for a while you wanna do it exactly like this, following those same rules, neutral territory. This is the last time I'll send him over, go say hi, and the person doesn't have to pet him. Come, in fact, it would probably be better at first that he not. Good, but Johnny still is going over there, accepting a gift from the new person. Nothing, nothing obnoxious is happening. Nobody's going like this or doing anything. Just make sure you instruct your people uh, that uh, all they have to do is nothing. Just let the dog accept the reward out of their hands and it'll make him feel better and better about visitors because they didn't try to touch him and he'll start to become more comfortable and then later on people can pet him. Um, so what happens next is we give our visitor a handful of treats and we follow them inside, which we're about to show you. So let's just keep filming. We follow him, never have them follow you. Come on, buddy, sit. And he's already got treats, right? So, okay, you bring Johnny through here, sit. Keep going, Darian. Okay, we're gonna go inside. And your house, of course, is laid out way differently than ours, but we leave this door open. I didn't actually tell him how to do this. Come on, buddy, let's go. So we're now, sit, we're on the outside. The visitor's already inside. You should stand right there so the camera can catch it. And then I'm giving Johnny treats. He feels really good about this. Okay, the person's already there. Sit and go, go say hi. Excellent, and then we hang out here and look what I'm doing. More treats, handfuls of treats. Good boy. Very good. He just gets lots of gifts from this person inside the living room and it's a completely different reaction from Johnny because you did it differently. Now he was the one coming in, the person was inside and turned it all around on him. He's never acted in a, in a frightened, uh, suspicious way uh, with a person that was already inside and Johnny was outside and this person gave him tons of treats. And so now, like if this was your house and I was you, you put Johnny away with a big old treat in his crate. This is how you end the interaction. Do this a number of times before you let him hang out for five or 10 minutes with the person. But if you do, when, once you do start letting him just hang out in the living room or the kitchen, wherever you are with your guests, make sure the people keep giving him treats. He comes over to them, good. 
Good, if you see Johnny being suspicious or acting strange at all, you always have, come, call Johnny to you. Good, call him away from that person. Keep the leash on. All of this is only temporary, but if you do this for just like the first month, six weeks or so, and it's different for every dog, of course, he's gonna be way different with your visitors if you continue doing what we've been doing here. We always have Johnny sit before he goes through doorways, especially major boundaries like the front door. And I'm just showing you how I bring him in. This is one of the yards that he would be free out in and we called him to come, we had him sit. Um, it's done a very specific way that makes it a lot more effective. As you can see, I had him sit, I stepped away, I stepped through the boundary. He waits till I come back to get him. Never call him to you. I know that some people used to do that, but all you'd be doing is um, building anticipation in him because he'd be right on the edge like when is he gonna call me through normally I wouldn't be talking so much um, so you know you would just say sit you'd step in you step back and okay he walks in with you come on buddy and then on the inside of course when we're in here we would put him away in his crate and I'm gonna show you how I take him out as well and we're gonna go for a walk We have him sit on the inside, open the door. He stays in a sit stay. He waits till I come back next to him. Okay, he walks through with me without pulling. Um, I could have pulled it shut behind me, but I'm always wondering if, you know, careful to make sure I don't clip the dog's tail. So very often I'll do a little left turn like this and close it like that, it's probably safer. And then we have him sit, which he's done it so many times, he'll do it automatically, but we still say sit. Don't assume that he's just gonna do it, for a while at least. Always tell him sit, and then we're gonna walk through the yard. Okay, just shoot me doing this, because we're gonna take him for a walk, and I just wanna show you exactly how we do it every day. And here I do another little left turn like this. Sit, open the gate. Of course, I'm going to step through and step back. Okay, he comes through with me and we have one more gate and then we're going to show you from the outside how that works. Sit. Now we're going to take Johnny out for the walk. We do this every day, have him sit. We step out. We step back. It's a very clear message that this is your boundary when you do this with all boundaries, gateways, curbs. Okay, and here we've got another gate to close behind me. Do a little left turn. Those left turns where your body, you use your body to guide him to where you want him to go and also a series of little taps. If you watch this video, which you can do as many times as you want, obviously, you see me doing little taps. It's kind of like tapping the brakes. Just like, I'll do a left turn, I'll tap to slow him down a little bit, and then sit. And of course, at the curb, the curb is a boundary, we do the same thing at the curb. Practice a little sit stay because we can, because of course he has to stay here and focus in order for me to do this, so it's very beneficial for the, the whole uh, project, the Johnny project. Good, see how I tapped him, he looked up at me said good and gave him the reward. That's how I reward him every time. It's straight down like that when he's in a sit next to me. Now we're gonna cross the street in training mode. Okay, and see how he's not pulling. If he were to pull you, you can just do these little taps. I'm walking super slow kind of to accentuate the fact that he really knows how to walk on a loose leash next to me. His head is at my leg, as you can see. And over here, I'm gonna do a little left turn and have him sit. And, so you can see him here, I'll pat his chest and say, go, and he's free. And now we get to start the walk. Okay. I'm gonna show you how I practice the recall with Johnny. And out here on, on a leash in public. And uh, also go over some, just a basic leash walking etiquette with you. And in general, with the leash walking, it's keep the leash loose. If he goes ahead, see how he wants to move for further with the walk? We just came out here, we've been out here for like two minutes. He loves his walks and he's kind of excited, but you always want to keep this loose. And he's on free time now. This isn't even associated with a command at all or anything. This is just how you handle the leash. 
um, whenever you have him on the leash. You always keep it loose. You've got this little tiny prong collar that's on him. But you see how I'm using it throughout the videos. It's not for causing pain. It just is like putting power steering on your dog. It makes it very easy for you to control him. All you do is little taps, closes with the same pressure all the way around his neck, not just like here, like a regular collar. Therefore, it's much easier to handle the dog. It's better for him. There's no pain, there's no stress, because your biggest enemy is gonna be a tight leash. So if you have other people walking the dog, if you have a dog walker or a pet sitter or something like that, you have to make sure that they watch this video, that they're not doing this. They're not letting him rush through doorways, pulling them around and obviously he can do this so it's just up to the person to do my move so this doesn't happen because if he's not practiced with for a while he can easily go back to doing his old ways again so make sure that everybody watches this video and and of course you'll take lessons from me as well so we'll go over everything but when you're out in, in public especially keep that leash loose and you always have your recall as well let's say that for some reason he's pulling you uncontrollably come call him back to you Good, see how easy that was? You can step into him and have him sit. You could do that and then you could just get him into, into uh, training mode like that. Go, see how I called him back to come to me? Left hand leash, just the loop over my hand on my left hand so there's no way I could possibly lose him even if I'm not looking and he takes off there's I can't lose him so just hold it like this I'm never using this hand to do that there's no reason to ever do that again and if I'm gonna call him to me I'm gonna have the reward in my right hand I'm gonna make this target because when you don't have a reward he'll still come to this target he won't know it's empty so whenever you can practice, make sure you have a little reward because when you don't have one, he'll always come to this target. So it's not a half open hand like this, it's not like that. It's not a flat hand, it's his target because he wants what's good in there. But as you can see, and I'm gonna create a distraction, and do it again. Go, come, as you can see, good, as soon as he takes it, I say good. He's always more skittish with me out in public although he lets me pet him now, which he never did before. But the moment his little nose hits my target hand, I open, he gets a treat, I say good, and I pet him. That's what you wanna do, because when you don't have the treat, it'll be like this. Let's say it's an emergency, there's no treat. Come, he'll still come to you. Good, you pet him, you say good. He's gonna barely miss it. And of course, as time goes on, you use less and less treats when you're practicing because even now he's been here for a while and he's so much better. So that's, that's why we're using treats with the recall. Um, always practice calling him away from uh, something that he's looking at. Never call him when he's looking at you because that's not a real life experience. Um, it's gonna be something he's interested in. That's why I tossed the, the little treat away from me so he would have a distraction to be called away from. So when you're practicing with him, always at least wait till he looks away from you or create your own distraction like you saw uh, I just did. There's a distraction, show that over there. So he's looking at that and then show back Johnny. Come, perfect way to practice. Good, not that he has an issue with people at all, but the way you're gonna have a solid recall with him, and it gets just better and better, sit, is whenever he notices something, could be a leaf falling from a tree or something, some noise or whatever, people, whatever it is, another dog, definitely always call him away from those. Um, every time you do what, what I just did, he gets better and better because you're instilling a pattern of behavior that becomes automatic, and whenever he hears that command, he's gonna come to you. So this, this applies to out in public and also in your backyard. The same, all these same concepts. In the backyard, we might be practicing with a longer leash, but it's all the same concepts. Also backing away, you saw how I backed away. When you back away, the dog is drawn to you. So you're always gonna, when you're practicing, make sure you have some space behind you so you can back away. Go. And now he's released again. And uh, we're gonna continue our walk on a loose leash and uh, go over to Home Depot. We are here with Johnny in a very public place. There's lots going on. What I've been doing is taking him here and giving him treats. And from day one, we were doing this. Hey, buddy, look. Because I wanted him to have a new association of what it meant to come out in public. I know that he was formerly super shy and afraid of people and places. So every day we come over here, we do this, sit. So every day, I've always practiced sit stays here 
maybe just one in a different spot every day and then a different downstay. And uh, while we're here today though, I'm gonna make sure it's kind of quiet now, kind of slow. You can walk past. You don't wanna walk past? So we'll wait for other people to walk past because usually there are people that are everywhere. We wanna show you that. Um, it's just, a, it's the best kind of practicing note. It's the best kind of practicing out in public like this at this at this point in his training. Good, very good. Very good. And we're going we're to pick another spot too, just to show you with more activity how you can be really calm. Okay. Good. We're going to practice this little sit stay in a busier area. We're going to have a couple of areas here. See the carts are coming right at us. Good. I am going to help him out by giving him little rewards at the right moment as people or carts or distractions, as we call them, approach us. I'm desensitizing him to them. Nope. By rewarding him. And at the same time, practicing his solid sit stay, which of course, this is, you know, this is the place to practice a real life situation like this. And most likely he won't, it's okay. Yeah. Most likely he won't ever be in a situation this stressful because I don't think you'll be taking him to Home Depot. So he got up there because I wasn't able to help him with that. But if he pops up, do a little circle, reset him just like that. And if you're practicing a sit stay with a lot of distractions around, continue to practice. Good. Until you get a success. If I had to reset him three, four, five times, I would do that. Good, until I got a success. And once you have a success, then you can move on. Okay. Down. Good. No. Nope. Good. We're practicing a down stay in public where it really matters. He needs to be able to do a down stay in a real life situation. And of course, he picks a very extreme real life situation just to show you good how much he's changed. Good boy, Johnny. Good. This association with people and you know bigger distractions is very noisy around here. Obviously, his association with all that stuff. Oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah, um, has changed a lot because good. We practiced his focus a lot, and once he was good in my yard and on my street, we gradually moved up to a crazy uh, situation like this. But his, now he comes here and he knows like everything's safe. This is a place where he gets treats in, in exchange for working. Please, it's okay, it's okay. Um, and so he looks at this as working for me, coming here, something very positive. He feels safe, obviously. It's given him a new purpose in life to do this. And you can do this with him good in your backyard, uh, inside your house in front of your house, down the street, and you'll get the same results if you do my moves and follow these same rules, and he'll just keep getting better and better and better. So as you can see, I've walked around him uh, several times. Also, he's put up with a number of things going past, big distractions where he would have obviously freaked out before. Good. He's much calmer now, much, much better. He's waiting for me to stand back next to him, pat my leg and say, okay, sit. And now we're gonna move on. Okay. The, the front door of Home Depot, just to show you just in general how Johnny is, good boy, in a very public setting, how He's not uh, as, as nervous and as afraid as he used to be. Um, when I first got him, I actually couldn't pet him for, for a couple weeks. So 
we certainly couldn't take him out in public. Um, but we gradually practiced, little by little, built his, his uh, confidence. He, he's on free time, like I said. Right now, he's just on free time, hanging out. He's not afraid of people. Good, he's not skittish. If there was a loud noise right next to him or if somebody just walked up and tried to touch him, yeah, he'd still be skittish. But as you can see, he's just so much better than he used to be. He can go to public places and hang out and he has no problem at all. We're just gonna wait for some more people to walk out the door just to show you how easygoing he's become lately. Good boy. I don't know if you've noticed, but every time there's a distraction, he notices them, turns back to me, and I pay him. And that's really what you want. Come. <laughs> he likes the camera person. Good. Um, because now, instead of being afraid, he looks to me. Watch, it'll happen again. He notices. If he looks back at me, I'm waiting for him to do that. Good boy. I always reward him. And, and if you just watch that, if you're going to take him out in public and just wait for distractions to come past, practice with distractions, reward him as they... Um, you know, as he turns his back on them and as they go past, good. You just get, you know, more and more desensitized to these occurrences. And this is actually a lot for him. Good. All it is is giving him a different association with what it means to have people close by, to be out in public. Now, it's fun. He's safe. He gets treats when people pass by. He ignores them. Every distraction triggers him to pay attention to me, which will be you, of course. And then you just reward him for that. And then it, every time we do this, he gets better and better and better. Look at all this, this is great. And he's fine. Come! And you can always have, you can always use the recall to call him back to you if you need to. Get him out of there if some, some uh, situation gets too intense. Come on, buddy, let's go.